Elon Musk recently revealed that Tesla is expanding the robo-taxi geofence in Austin already. Before we dive into that, what are your key takeaways from the launch so far? Do you think it's been successful? And any comments on the relative lack of noise surrounding the launch so far? I think that's been quite poignant for me. Uh, yeah, I, I think the key takeaways is that it's been pretty drama-free. And I think the most uh, amazing thing about it is the actual video where someone was sitting in a robo taxi and there's a safety driver but you're not supposed to talk to the safety driver they're not meant to be uh like an uber person like talking to you so the the person did not uh exit the robo taxi they just like stayed there and they were filming and the safety driver didn't say a whole uh, didn't say a word and it was super, super awkward. <laughs> and then, and then what happened was, um, the, I'm, I'm sure the person was awake or whatever, but they were just testing the limits of the system and he would not get out of the robot taxi. So then what happened was it called up, um, support and then, it, and then basically support was like, Hey, can we help you with anything? And then uh, he said, Oh yeah, uh, I guess I fell asleep. Okay. Thank you. And, and then he got out. Right. So it shows how it handles scenarios like that. I think that was just like an amazing thing. Like, I don't think that, um, yeah, it, it's just, it's just amazing to see how it would handle these edge cases. And it really opens up your mind. Hey, this could really work. You know, certain edge cases, people say will kill the robot taxi, but they're already handling the edge cases right now. And it's even more exciting with rock for because right now a human had to say hey can i help you with anything and then the response was oh i fell asleep sorry and then they left but imagine if it was grok saying hey can i help you with anything is there any it's not like a hard thing to say you know and then the person would say sorry i fell asleep and then leaves exactly the same thing so they have all the pieces in place for it to work and that's the thing that they're testing out and so far they are proving that out. And that's what's really exciting to me. The ultimate goal for Tesla has always been millions of cars joining a robo taxi network. Since we're almost a month into the rollout now, is there anything you've seen that could potentially weaken the chances of that bull case scenario happening with Tesla launching a fleet of millions of robo taxis? Yeah, um, I do. So as a as an asset manager, I, I cannot I don't think it would be good on my investors to just say, Hey, Tesla can do no wrong and there are no risks whatsoever. Um, because I, I have a responsibility to manage the ETF wisely. And I think there are some real risks and that there are only short term risks, but not long term risks. So, uh, I think a, a real short term risk is how to handle uh glare because i i do have fsd uh hardware three so i don't have multiple cameras on the front of the car like one you know one down there and one up here and whatever so so glare is a is a big deal and everyone a lot of people have talked about it it seems to be still an issue so when i think about it and the sun is going like straight at the camera and as a human i can barely see even as a human right then uh it just happened to me the other day what i did was i moved my head to a different angle and i, I kept adjusting my head until i can barely see what's ahead of me and then uh, i was able to see barely enough to slowly like keep moving forward the problem is for the tesla it it cannot move the camera to try to figure out different angles, right? Same thing when there's blind spots or different things. As a human, uh, it is true. All you need is the eyes, like Elon said. But um, there are times where we just look around and we like kind of crane our neck out for a safety. And uh, people have demonstrated, hey, there's some issues here because uh, you can't see, like you physically cannot see the data. So if, if there's issues where you physically cannot see the data, then no matter how smart the car is, it will not know that uh, there's a speeding car going this way. 
and in a blind spot and it's uh, obscured by a building like it physically cannot know so um in those cases we have to declare hey maybe a human is better in that situation right but what's really encouraging is that the architecture for hardware four uh, actually was resolving a lot of that stuff right when you add another camera down there people just think oh he must have just put an extra camera just for because people want it or something it's like no people did not want it <laughs> no one asked for it you know there was a specific reason for it, it, it he uh elon really doesn't like redundancy uh, i mean not not redundancy um basically things that are not needed but it is needed because with multiple angles well you can see further in the blind spots when you're crossing an unprotected left and it protects against glare uh, because it's a different angle and then if in their tests they can show that it physically has all the hardware necessary to achieve that level then then it's proven out it's like okay um that's good enough so my concern is yeah uh they might achieve it but it's very clear that they're going to achieve it hardware four and above and uh that's not like that many vehicles there there has been a decline in sales unfortunately so uh and then a lot of those hardware three vehicles are not going to be able to uh, achieve full self-driving so um i think that's the main risk but it's it's a short-term risk because if you have a self-driving car that's worth so much that it would be a no-brainer to upgrade it and add the extra cameras Tesla's expanding their geofence in Austin, so therefore expanding the network already. From what we've seen so far, do you think this is happening faster or slower than you expected? Uh, this is actually faster than I expected, even for Tesla. <laughs> but yeah, I think it, it is amazingly fast in the quote unquote, you know, autonomous race. I, I do think that Tesla is way ahead, uh, but within autonomous within the autonomous industry, it takes months, if not years, for them to increase the geofence. So uh, because every single time they have human programmers that say, "Hey, in this case, when you see this particular building or this bridge, make sure you avoid it. Make sure you act in a certain way." And programmers are somewhat slow because <laughs> they have to code that all in. They say, when you see this bridge, okay, it's an exception. Do this, do that, do this, right? That's not true AI, which is completely different. It's true AI, not a whole bunch of, um, you know, code monkeys behind the screen. You know, it seems like it's a self-driving car, but behind there's all these gnomes that are actually like, driving the car, which is very similar to Waymo. And, um, the other, you know, self-driving cars that are out there. So there was a very recent talk um, by the Scale AI um, CEO that was very eye-opening. He said that there were multiple teleoperators. So each teleoperator for all these other self-driving car companies, um, they have about like, uh, they're managing maybe three or four cars at a time. So that was really, really eye opening because people are used like other than Tesla, they're using scale AI, right? And that guy sees the behind the scenes look at things. So on the surface, it looks like, oh, um, Waymo, look, look, so ahead. Look, there's no safety driver, all that stuff. But actually that no safety driver thing is just an illusion for marketing purposes in order to raise more money. But in reality, it's exactly the same thing as having a safety driver because there's a teleoperator behind the scenes, right? And the last thing they will reveal is how many cars that they actually manage. <laughs> and it just happened to be released by accident in a Y Combinator interview, you know? Um, but basically it's, uh, I, and, and to be fair, Tesla does have teleoperators as well, but I think um, because of their approach and their AI first approach, they don't need to have one guy for every three. Um, they can basically scale it out so that one guy can have a hundred or, you know, way, way more. 
uh, and their exception case will increasingly get smaller and smaller and smaller. And the speed of the geofence rollout shows that they are not hard coding every single exception, but that their AI first approach is paying off. And that's the main takeaway with the fast geofence uh, expansion. If you were to map out the next, let's say three to six months, then 12 months, then 24 months, what size or scale do you expect Tesla's robo taxi network to be at? Yeah, so I think for the next three, three to four months, it won't be like as big as people may have may think. Uh, I think, but not necessarily because of technology. I think it might be because of regulation. Um, so I'm a little bit uh, less optimistic than Elon on this point in that um, Elon just thinks, oh, well, if it's twice as safe as a human, then uh, by default, it, it'll just be everywhere. <laughs> Millions of cars, like boom, uh, overnight. Um, the, there are risks though. So you know, as a as someone as an asset manager, you know we have to uh, think about the real risks, and sometimes the risks are, is not technology, but actually people and bureaucracy. And we we see that even in the uh, you know U.S. political system, you can not identify fraud and all this other stuff with Doge, but then realize uh, the politicians on both sides cannot get rid of it because it's been entrenched in the system for so long that people don't want uh, the pipeline of free money to be cut off. So then uh, basically it's very hard for legislators to actually do the right thing because the slow moving um, you know, juggernaut of legislation cannot be stopped so easily. So in the same way, uh, I mean, to be fair, the US still is, is a leader in this. <laughs> Because, uh, I mean, no offense to you, but <laughs> Europe <laughs> is pretty uh, behind in this. Um, so they are actually less innovative than the U.S. in, uh, in many ways. So uh, Tesla has been trying to get the ability to change lanes without approval for like the longest time. <laughs> and FSD in Europe cannot change lanes uh, without the the driver approving the move. And it's really been holding uh, FSD back. So that's an example of something that is clearly less safe for people. It's very clear from the data that allowing FSD to do its thing uh, is safer for people than not allowing FSD to do its thing. But even though it's rationally clear that it is better, the legislators still want to put in their own rules. They say, oh, just so that we look like we're safe, you have to make sure that the system does this, the system does that, and it just messes up everything. Like they have no understanding of how AI works. You're not supposed to give those rules. <laughs> Otherwise, it, act, it can't actually do the best action. So um, in that way, it might work in you know, California and Texas, and then uh, say that works. What if there is political resistance the other states say, oh, we have our own set of rules. In order to drive here, you got to do this. In order to drive here, you got to do this. That would be an absolute nightmare. So um, I think there's a lot of political risks because the main thing that we, we want as investors for the success of the project is to have it be a nation, uh, like a nationwide approval of FSD. And if that can be achieved, that would be a game changer. And if we could get there, yes, then then it's only a matter of time to have millions of these cars. It would just be in a blink of an eye, essentially. They, they would just build the cars, you know? Even if there aren't as many sales right now, they would just build way more cars and then it would be game over. Um, but there are some real risks to consider on the political front. Croc 4 has just been released. I know that's something you're very excited about. Do you see Grok being integrated with Tesla's RoboTaxi at all? Yeah, I I do, and that's really exciting. And recently, uh, Elon has finally confirmed it <laughs> that within 
within weeks, they plan to in integrate Grok into uh, Tesla's. So I think the super, super exciting part about that is um, for sure they are, they are uh, planning for the integration of Grok. So every, every time, like we mentioned before, like the operator, they're only speaking over the, uh, over the speaker and they were working out customer complaints or queries or whatever, all through, uh, through a speaker, right. And through a microphone. Well, the interesting thing about that digital medium is that, uh, Grok can handle that stuff. So it's really exciting because FSD will be able to handle all those interactions, um, things that used to take a lot of time for customer support or different things that will inevitably come up when you have a robot taxi network. Um, all the times where you tell your Uber driver, Hey, can you drop me off over there instead of over here? And it's kind of vague, but most of the time the human knows what you're talking about. And you're not like typing out some very like detailed instructions, like, okay, it's this specific curb and make sure it's two inches away from this. Like you just say that, right. And that will all be unlocked with Grok because the partnership between Grok and FSD will create a user experience that is so much greater than each one individually. So it becomes like a one plus one equals three situation where uh, the overall user experience will be amazing. And from an investment point of view, there is a world of difference between an amazing UX experience and a okay UX experience. And you see that with Apple, right? You can get like a multi-trillion dollar valuation when you have a user experience that's like just slightly better and basically makes it into a magical experience. And What's really exciting is that the FSD and Grok will allow that to happen. And we see that on the horizon. 